Californians are sweltering through a heat wave again today as firefighters battle multiple wildfires across the state. Beaches and campgrounds were full with people seeking relief from the heat. Military helicopters airlifted hundreds of people trapped by a wildfire at a California campground near Shaver Lake in the Sierra National Forest late yesterday and again today. Two people were severely injured and the fire quickly spread to more than 56 square miles. Officials have said nearly 12,500 firefighters are battling 22 major fires in the state just this weekend. The heat wave is expected to continue through tomorrow and California's utility companies are asking residents once again to reduce energy use to help avoid rolling blackouts. Now at 10, much of California on fire tonight. Dozens of wildfires burning across the strait, destroying homes, forcing thousands of people to evacuate. And tonight, the governor declaring a state of emergency in five counties, including San Bernardino, where the El Dorado fire has now grown to more than 7,000 acres. The fires come in the midst of another threat, record-breaking heat. Some areas seeing temperatures climb as high as 121 degrees. Tonight, thousands of customers are left in the dark as the demand for energy strains the state's power grids. And cooling off at the coast. As the heat kicks in, beachgoers pack the sand and the surf. The increased concerns tonight, though, about a possible surge in COVID. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the News at 10. I'm Rick Chambers. And hi, I'm Courtney Friel. Three major fires are burning in Southern California tonight during a record-breaking heat wave on a holiday weekend. Evacuations already underway near Yucaipa, and tonight we've learned that the fire was sparked by some type of fireworks at a gender reveal party. We've got live team coverage for you tonight on the fires and the historic heat from the air and the ground in our weather center as well. Let's begin, though, with Colton. He's up in Sky 5. Colton. Rick, you're looking at the El Dorado fire here. Started yesterday around 10.30 in the morning. Very small at that time, but grew very quickly. Uh, that small fire uh, has now grown to over 7,000 acres, 7,050 acres to be exact. 5% contained last reported from uh, the CAL FIRE group out here in San Bernardino. You can see these flames here. This is over on the more northwest side of the fire. This is up off uh, Highway 38, which goes up into the mountains. That's where a, a bulk uh, of the fire load is tonight. It is away from homes. Uh, as we pan out, I'm going to kind of push over uh, to the uh, East Yucaipa area. That's where we were watching earlier where we saw um, fire crews setting back fires to uh, put out some of the um, the or to uh, disable some of the brush in the area that could have been a problem this evening. We want to talk about evacuation orders because, of course, that's what's on everybody's mind out here. The following communities are under a mandatory evacuation order. Forest Falls, Mountain Home Village, Oak Glen, and the North Bench, Yucaipa, specifically north of Yucaipa Boulevard and east of Bryant Street. Now, as of tonight, this blaze has grown to more than 7,000 acres with just 5% containment. Investigators say they now know the cause. Someone set off some sort of pyrotechnical smoke device, some sort of firework at a gender reveal party. That sparked the flyer that spread north to the Yukaipa Ridge and is now threatening these communities. The extreme heat and low humidity is adding to the challenge. Residents tell us they've been up all night watching the fire, hoping it would spare their homes. We're also tracking a handful of other fires that are burning tonight here in Southern California. The triple digit heat and high winds fanning a lot of flames out there tonight. The Bobcat fire, this one broke out in the Angeles National Forest. It's about noon today, threatening homes near Azusa. Within an hour though, uh, or a matter of hours anyway, it had already scorched more than 1,800 acres, still 0% contained as far as we know. Fire crews expect this one to grow a bit overnight though as the winds start picking up. State Route 39, that one's closed in both directions at El Encanto Park. That's, of course, to make way for fire personnel trying to get up to the line. Still unclear, though, what sparked these flames. A little bit of good news, though, tonight for this firefight near the Sepulveda Basin. After battling these flames in intense heat for a number of hours today, crews were able to finally get this one contained fully. It ultimately scorched only about 20 acres of brush. This is over near the 405. A couple of firefighters and a civilian, though, were hurt during this firefight. We understand they're going to be fine. It's unclear exactly what started this one. 
And finally, several homes have been destroyed in San Diego's East County. That's where another fast-moving wildfire continues to burn out of control tonight. This one's grown to more than 9,800 acres, though, and it's only 1% contained. The Valley Fire, as it's called, erupted Saturday, spread at dangerous speeds, though, fueled by extreme heat, the winds down there. Evacuation orders are in place for several communities in San Diego's East County area. This is over near Alpine, where homes tonight are being threatened. That record breaking heat that you were mentioning, 121 degrees in Woodland Hills. It's taking its toll on the power grid. Tens of thousands of customers in Los Angeles County are sweating it out without electricity tonight. KTLA5's Jennifer McGraw joins us live from Woodland Hills with more on the scorching heat. Hi, Jen. Hey, Court, 77,000 LA DWP customers and about 47,000 SoCal Edison customers. So a whole lot of people that are hot tonight. Luckily, it is cooling down. When we talk about that 121, you take a look at this bank over here. It says 96 degrees, so we're not getting much of a, of a relief. However, it kind of feels like a relief because 121 is just crazy. We're not used to those temperatures. We saw 117 last night, and the last time that a record was recorded was 115, and that was decades ago. A blast of heat bearing down on Southern California, causing blackouts and leaving tens of thousands in the dark. Power companies servicing overheating equipment as temperatures soar, breaking records. It is hotter than Satan's armpit right now. <laughs> it's like walking into an oven. I can feel my, my skin cooking. I, I know what it feels like to be a pizza now. Some couldn't stand the valley heat and beat it at the beach. This is unbearable, uh, unhealthy. So like my, in my case, I have asthma, bronchitis, and this is very unhelpful for me. I usually don't drink water. And my wife keeps getting on my case, but today I think I drank about five bottles of water already. So trying to become hydrated. Governor Gavin Newsom hoping to avoid those rolling blackouts that left tens of thousands without power during the last heat wave by issuing an emergency order to shore up power. But it doesn't appear to be enough considering much, much higher temperatures this time around. Last night we saw thousands of residents without electricity. So Cal Edison says some of their equipment malfunctioned and it was not due to rolling blackouts. Nothing we do. Just wait till the light come back. <laughs> electricity. State and local leaders asking everyone to conserve energy to avoid massive blackouts. Everybody I've seen outside doing their job today, I just, I feel so bad for them, but I'm so thankful that they are doing what they're doing. Cal ISO declared a stage two emergency, which we could expect outages, but if the power grid continued to get stretched, we would be then in an emergency stage three, which would mean rolling blackouts. For now, live in Woodland Hills, Jennifer McGraw, KTLA 5 News. Uh, I signed an emergency proclamation uh, that very specifically, very demonstrably, directly shifts energy consumption in this state. We're focused primarily on large energy users, and we are shifting to their backup power so they can utilize that power during the peak hours. We identify the peak hours roughly 3 p.m., uh, about 9, 10 p.m. Let's say 3 to 10 are the peak hours. I can explain in a moment uh, why those evening hours become the most precious in terms of our concerns, particularly as it relates to sun going down, the utilization of solar, uh, the fact that while we've had some peak gust winds, wind events across the state have been relatively mild. By the way, that's a good thing from a fire suppression perspective. That's an unfortunate uh, moment as it relates more broadly to addressing the episodic nature of the renewable portfolio, of which we are prideful in the state of California, uh, but vulnerable to in these conditions that I have stated. Uh, number two, we have looked to focus on the shared power, the power rather, that we have stored as part of our PSPS protocols in the state. Uh, we've talked a lot in the last year uh, about these public power shutoffs and the need to have protocols, not just with PG&E in Northern California, but our other investor-owned utilities what we refer to as the IOUs. Uh, there are new protocols, new procedures that are required of these IOUs as it relates to the utilization of stored energy and power for PSPS. Uh, we are going to allow for the utilization for non-PSPS purposes of that stored power uh, pursuant to this emergency proclamation that I've put forward. 
Accordingly, we're working with ports up and down the state of California. Interestingly, uh, to many of you perhaps, uh, large ships uh, that come in on port, huge container volume, second to none in the United States that comes in and out of the state of California. This is a West Coast port. Uh, utilize tremendous amount of energy. And so we're working to reduce the consumption uh, of that energy uh, at the ports to reduce ultimately the amount of energy people pulled off the grid. As I said, we're working with major customers up and down the state and consumers, some of the largest commercial uh, consumers, uh, as well as some well-established consumers that are brands in the state from Nest to Tesla and others that have been very helpful and accommodating in terms of putting out messages uh, to their consumer base around the need to reduce usage. Uh, we also are working to procure and bring online uh, more energy from LA, DPW or DWP, uh, getting support uh, from the State Water Board as it relates to getting more hydro online. We're looking at peakers. Uh, these are our peak generators called peaker plants, the vernacular of our energy experts, uh, and getting them online, uh, basically putting all our energy to create more energy, uh, all the tools in the toolkit uh, to meet the needs of customers in the next 72 hours. But even with all of that, uh, we are likely to fall short, and we should see uh, some episodic uh, issues as it relates to supplying the coverage that you deserve and you demand. KPI X Files Wilson Walker with how a utility company is ramping up efforts to avoid rolling outages during the extreme heat. Wilson? Well, this is sort of a long-term challenge for California now. At 5 o'clock, we were talking about the specific nature of this power crunch. Solar is taking up more of our grid. Solar, of course, goes away with the sun. So how do you bridge that gap when the demand continues into the evening? That is the challenge we are faced with again now for the second time in a month here. Well... The problem comes from back here, and here in Vacaville, PG&E is experimenting with how you fix this. That load's going up, your generation's coming down. How do you use solar energy when the sun is gone? Well, three years ago, PG&E gave us a look at this set of sodium sulfur batteries combined to make one giant battery. The idea, hold that solar power just long enough to help with evening demand. And what we found is that generally energy storage as it is today, it has the capacity to discharge for about four hour, it can hold about four hours of energy discharge duration. Three years later now, and PG&E is working on similar projects across California. Uh, we have more than a thousand megawatts of energy storage under contract today, and these are battery energy storage systems. One of them in Monterey County would be among the largest of its kind in the world. But even that won't be enough to close the gap in heat waves like the one coming this weekend. And when that happens, we need to have enough other resources to meet the demand. And that is something that the planning really hasn't kept up with. Kind of a slow motion problem we have made for ourselves here in California. Too much solar and not quite enough to cover the demand when that little gap uh, emerges. So this problem is going to be with us for a while. As we mentioned at five, they have gone ahead and extended the life of several gas powered power plants down in Southern California. They were supposed to get shuttered at the end of this year. They were going to go on now for another year or three years, depending on which plant. So California has yet another energy problem on its hands here and something like a breakthrough in battery technology is the kind of thing it's going to take to sort of fix this for us. It's not going away anytime soon. We are live here in Vacaville. Wilson Walker, KPX 5. California energy officials calling a stage two flex alert emergency triggered by all this extreme heat. So far, there have not been any rolling blackouts, but as NBC 4's Darsha Phillips explains, thousands of power outages have been reported and the heat wave is just getting started. Several blocks without power here in Baldwin Hills. You can see the businesses behind me, they're dark. Also, the traffic lights have been impacted. Motorists trying to navigate their way around this. And over here, you can see DWP workers, well, they're trying to fix this problem. of frustrated drivers in Baldwin Hills trying to get through Crenshaw and Obama Boulevard after a power outage cut the traffic lights. Across the street, the McDonald's arches no longer glowing golden, a sign in the window saying closed due to power outage. Blocks and blocks of businesses and homes without power. I have air conditioning upstairs, but 
you know, um, not downstairs. And so that's why I thought it's best to come and get the dog and, um, you know, go over to my to my mother's house. Becky Shaw came home to her lights and her AC out. She's hoping everything is back up and running soon. Tomorrow, I'm hoping to come home tonight. But thank God I have somewhere to go. This power outage is affecting 462 DWP customers in the Baldwin Hills, Crenshaw area, but thousands of others were affected by outages across LA County. The triple digit temps have put a strain on the power grid. California's independent systems operator declared a stage two emergency, which could mean planned outages. So it's possible that we may have uh, rolling blackouts uh, tomorrow, Sunday. If a planned outage occurs, it will happen between 4 and 9 p.m. and last about an hour. And we know that, you know, during this time, people are working from home, kids are doing online learning. So we understand how disruptive these outages can be. SoCal Edison says the system is taxed and customers need to conserve. It really means that even more than ever, um, a customer's conserving energy is really important and it can it can help uh, avoid uh, rolling blackouts. Tomorrow is going to be another hot day and SoCal Edison says it has already notified 165,000 of its customers that they may experience rolling blackouts. In Baldwin Hills, I'm Darsha Phillips, NBC4 News. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Holy. Just keep going. Well, this was a close call for hikers attempting to get away from a raging wildfire in the Sierra National Forest up in Fresno. These folks cut their backpacking trip short when they noticed ash falling from the sky. Following that ash was fire. With help from a park ranger, they had just minutes to escape the fast moving wildfire. I think if we had stayed just 10 minutes more, we might not have been so lucky. Uh, we did run into a ranger and it was actually per her instruction that we drove through that fire. And hundreds of people were trapped by the creek fire at the Mammoth Pool Reserve, or Reservoir, rather. rather. A pair of military helicopters were scrambled to airlift them out. Two people refused to evacuate and were left behind. In less than three months, there have been close to 8,000 Black Lives Matter protests around the country. And a new report from the U.S. Crisis Monitor says 93% of them involved peaceful protesters. That's how many of them were this weekend. Protesters calling for justice, pleading for police reform. From Louisville to St. Louis and in Portland, Maine. But that's not to say there was no tension. Protesters went head to head in Orlando and in Dallas. Portland, Oregon marked the 100th night of protests in the city, and police declared a riot. They say protesters became violent and began throwing Molotov cocktails. Dozens were arrested. There were arrests in Rochester, too, where police used pepper spray and tear gas on crowds. But in the face of what they see as racism and injustice. It's just scary being a black person. Like, how can I not be here? How can I not be here fighting for this? If you are traveling to Denver, Colorado for Labor Day, you might want to pack both a parka and some sunscreen. It's going to be hot with highs in the 90s on Monday, but farmers know the temperatures are going to crash, putting their crops in jeopardy. It is set to be cold by Tuesday night in the 30s, and there's a real chance of snow on Wednesday. That is a weather whiplash of about 60 degrees in just 36 hours. Wow. Coming up now, the summer fires can create their own weather systems. A woman took this photo over the creek fire up north during a flight from San Jose to Vegas. It's what meteorologists call a pyrocumulus cloud. I think that's right, right? Pyrocumulus. Cumulus. Yes. Uh, they, they form under certain conditions due to extreme heat from the fires and then sometimes turn into fire tornadoes as well. Yeah, sort of like this one. Take a look at this. SoCalFire.com shared this video oh, on Twitter. Go. It's a mini fire NATO swirling around at the El Dorado fire in New Kaipa. It's another example of fire conditions so intense they create their own weather systems. It's amazing to watch. Too. Right, Kirk, who is in for Kai tonight, talking about the uh, fire conditions that we're in for this week. 
and I feel we tend to get this weather phenomenon every year around this time. And I was actually just doing some research, trying to learn a little bit more about it to share with you, but you caught me off guard. Either way, uh, looking live at LAX, you can see volumes are low. We're looking for some areas along the coast to actually wake up with a little bit of low cloud and fog cover. Not a whole lot in the way of giving us enough relief, but it's still you know, we'll take whatever we can get. Now let's take a look at some record highs. Woodland Hills, again, breaking an all time LA County record, the hottest temperature ever recorded here at 121 degrees, 118 nearby in Van Nuys. Burbank also wanted to point this out. They tied a 114 record that was set yesterday. So two days of 114 degree weather. Lancaster saw a high of 112. The last time they saw that was 1950. Now here's some other totals that we saw Chino also 121 Woodland Hills trying to overshadow Chino a little bit, but it is certainly a hot out there in the Inland Empire. Idlewild 104 Escondido 115 and Big Bear. The big takeaway you can can't really go to the mountains to find relief and same thing with the coast as well. Current conditions 97 degrees from Van Nuys, a lot cooler than 114, but still very hot at this hour. 91 in Ontario and here's a look at heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, fire weather watches and fire weather warnings that remain in place. Another look at another fire weather watch that we're tracking fire weather warnings and of course this all has had an impact on air quality, very poor air quality as you may be realizing as a result of this overnight. We're expecting the winds to pick up and you can see along the I-5 corridor in particular, we're going to see gusts upwards of about 30 miles per hour. This all paves the way for a red flag warning and Santa Ana wind conditions to arrive on Tuesday night and really stick around midnight mid week. Now I'll step out of the way and show you some of the highs, some of the lows that we're going to see overnight, but these are all time highs in some cases for just the hottest overnight lows that we really have ever seen. 80 in Newhall, 82 in Santa Clarita, 79 the overnight low in Bakersfield. Now let's take a look at highs for tomorrow. A little bit cooler just slightly, but it's really going to be another hot day. 104 in Van Nuys, potentially 10 degrees cooler, 92 in Bell, 106 in Woodland Hills, 88 for Santa Ana, 109 in Irvine, 97 in Dana Point, 99 in Corona, 102 in Riverside. And now let's take a look. Here's your seven day forecast. Get ready for 92 degrees for your Labor Day forecast. Again, by Tuesday, we'll start to see some gradual cooling.